Up to this point, we've been able to build our entire design without ever deriving from the default values that come out of the box with Tailwind. We've used the default colors, the default spacing and font size scales, but now let's take a look at what happens when you need to add a specific value that's not available in Tailwind out of the box. Let's say for example that the Workation design team has reached out to us and sent us their new logo that's using the new brand color. So here I'll update my logo and we'll add the new image that we received, which is called logo-brand. So you can see the new logo here, a nice blue, but this blue is not part of Tailwind's default colors. And we'll need to find a way to replicate this color for our headline, our buttons, and our links, etc. So if we head over to our Tailwind config file, you may remember that we've looked at how to configure variants and extend them with the extend key. You can see that up here, we have another key, theme, that also has an extend object within it. The theme object here in our config is what's responsible for generating all the colors, the font sizes, the spacing scale, and much, much more. By default, if left empty, like here, it's going to inherit all the Tailwind default values. Now, before we actually look into customizing and extending these values, let's actually look at what the Tailwind default theme looks like. So to get a sneak peek, I'll generate another Tailwind config file with npx Tailwind CSS in it. But since we don't want to blow up this existing config file, I'll name it differently, tailwind-full.config.js. And here's the trick, I'll pass a full flag to indicate that I want to build the explicit config file that shows all the different values of the theme. And great, it's generated this tailwind full config file for us. Before I show you that file, just know that here, Tailwind is still going to be using our existing tailwind config file because by default, it looks for a file named tailwind.config.js. If I wanted my full config file to take over, I'd need to go in the post CSS config file and in the Tailwind CSS object here, add a config option that specify the path to a tailwind full.config.js. I do not want this to happen here, so I'll remove that, but this is how you would do it. So let's look at this config file. And in this full version of the file, the theme object will be explicitly defining all its values. For example, we have our screens object here, which is responsible to generate our responsive breakpoints. We have key value pairs here, small, 640, etc. And you can see that the key itself is going to generate the name of the variant. So for example, LG is going to generate our LG column variant that we've looked at. And if our 2XL key was called giant, it would generate a giant column variant for the 1536 pixel breakpoint. So I'd use it like this, giant column text 4XL to make the text for Excel pass this breakpoint. Let's undo that. Next, we have a colors object. So you can see that we're getting these colors from Tailwind CSS slash colors. And if we look at that file in the node modules folder, you can see that it exports a series of color shades, always ranging from 50, which is the lightest, to 900, which is the darkest. And we have the same for pink, purple, violet, indigo, blue, light blue, cyan, teal, emerald, green, lime, yellow, ember, orange, red, and a series of gray, warm gray, true gray, normal gray, cool gray, and blue gray. Now these are a lot and a lot of colors and by default, Tailwind doesn't use all of them in the default config file, but you can see that the subset of colors that have been packaged in the default theme are the default gray and then red, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple, and pink. Moving on, we next have our spacing object that is used for many things like margin, padding, width, height, translate, top, right, bottom, left properties, etc. We've seen that it starts with small, fine-grained incremental steps at the beginning and at some point starts making bigger jumps, eventually stopping on the 96 value. And again, this 96 key is used to generate the classes, so something like PT-96 for padding. And if that was called huge, then it would generate the class PT-huge. Let me undo that. If I keep going down, you can see that we have some default animations. And then this background color here is defined as a function that gets the theme and then is able to access the theme colors. So this is going to generate background color utilities for all of the colors in the theme.colors object. Let's keep going. We have more options for background image, background position, background size, border color, border opacity, border width, box shadow, cursor, fill, flex, font family, font size, font weight, gap, gradients, grid utilities, ring, ring offset, ring opacity, rotation, scale transform, skew, 
and basically almost any CSS property that can be mapped into a useful system of values. So it's not the recommended way, but technically it would be possible to start with this full config and then make your customization and changes on that file directly. Let's say, for example, you wanted to add a really big values to the spacing scale. You could come down here and add a 120 value, for example, which we would set to 30 rem. And this would give you classes like empty for margin top 120. I'll warn you though, there's a couple of big issues with doing it like this, in my opinion. First, it's not quite clear looking at the file what is default Tailwind and what is customized. Once you've added a series of customization to the file, it becomes hard looking at it knowing if something like 80 and 96 are default Tailwind values from the spacing scale or if they're part of the customization you've added. The other key point to understand is if Tailwind brings updates and changes to this config file, if you use the full config, it's really hard to integrate these new changes. You can kind of compare working with this full Tailwind config file to something like ejecting from a Create React app, for example, when you want more control on the customizations. Suddenly, the internal implementation is exposed to you and you've lost the ability to inherit the default settings. So instead of doing that, let's go and have a look at how we would customize Tailwind from the default config file, starting with an empty theme object. So like we've seen with variants and variants.extend, in the theme object, there's a possibility to override the default theme value or extend it. For example, let's reach for the colors object. And I have the hex value for the brand blue from the logo. So let's add a brand value and I will paste the hex color. Now, if I save this, you can see that we've lost all the colors in our app. Everything except the images has turned into black and white. This is because we've overridden our entire colors object with our single brand color here. Whenever you want to keep existing value and extend them, the place you want to add your values is inside the extend key. So I'll take my colors object here and move it down in the extend object and the colors should come back once it has recompiled. There you go. Okay, we've used the brand key here in our colors and let's see what classes it generated for us. If I go in any class name attribute and start typing brand, you can see we now have new utilities for text brand for the color, BG brand for the background, from, via, and to for gradients, divide brand colors, border brand colors, placeholder, ring offset, etc. We get all of these nice brand utilities by adding a single color value. So let's try update our headline, our button, and other elements. So I'll start with the second part of the headline down here, and instead of text indigo 500, we want to use text brand. And now our headline is matching the logo perfectly. Great, let's go to our button. So I'll go down a little bit more, and in here, instead of BG Indigo 500, and also the Focus Ring Indigo 500, I want these to use the brand color instead. So I'll go dash brand instead. So our button looks great and on brand now, and the active state looks really nice too, but we still have the hover state and active state. So it looks like we actually want three shades of this brand blue. The default brand, a brand light, which would be that color, and a brand dark, which would be that color. So let's try that. Instead of BG Indigo 400, we want to use brand light. So brand light. And on active, instead of BG Indigo 600, we want brand dark. So let's save that. And now if I hover over my button, it gets lighter and on click, it gets darker. Nice. So that looks good, but if we look at the desktop view, you can see we still have these card links to update quickly. So I'll go in our destination card component, and down there, instead of text indigo 500 for the default color, I'll go with the brand dark, and on hover, I'll go with the normal brand. And yeah, it's working nicely. Now our three colors work fine like this, but since we're defining multiple shades of the same color, we can also use the object syntax. So up here, I'll create a brand key and open an object this time. And I'll comment this brand color out for a second. So it turns out I can recreate the same color name by having a light key inside the brand. So I'll paste the same color here. And nesting your colors like this will create a brand dash light color. I'll do the same for the dark one. And now I can remove these two colors, which I've recreated. What about this base color, this default color? How do I handle this one? Well, it turns out that if we want a color that's just called brand, like this object, we can use the default in uppercase key for that. So if I go default in uppercase, this will now have generated the exact same class names, 
but it's organized in a slightly nicer way where we have a brand object that contains all the shades for that color. So this one will be brand-light, this one will be brand, that's it, and this one will be brand-dark. And you can see that it's still all working nicely. Okay, let's look at another quick customization in our config file. So the Workation Design team has also requested that we use a custom font for their flagship headline here. They have requested that we use a free Google font called Poppins here, so let's go and implement that. In my index.html file in the document head, I've added the necessary link tags to get this Google font working. Now in our Tailwind config file, let's extend our font family object. So I'll go below colors here and open a font family object. And we're going to create a new family of fonts and we'll call this headline. And this headline font will be Poppins and send serif as a fallback. So because we call this family headline, we should now have a font family class called font headline. So let's go and try that in our heading tag here. After text to Excel, I will go font and you can see font headline that uses Poppins and send serif. And you can see the new font here. And since the character spacing is a little bit different for this font, I'll also add a tracking of tight. And let's change the font to semi-bold. And I think that's gonna work a bit better. Yeah, that looks nice. Let's look at the desktop version. And this is looking great. By extending our theme with just a few values in our default config file, we were able to add custom colors and a custom font that fits the new requirements of the design. It's very clear by looking at our config file that we've extended the colors and the font family and doing it this way allows us to seamlessly inherit future updates added to the Tailwind CSS framework.